Hi and welcome to another video. This video is going to be on response pages mainly, but it also a bit of a refresher on URL filtering and how URL filtering works and the best practices, the best ways we can actually create block policies using URL filtering as opposed to using like a, a URL category within the uh, within the security rule. So the sites we're going to look at today are going to be um, gambling. Dot com, and we're going to see that that gets blocked, and we get web page blocked, and then the user, which in this particular instance is the IP address, the URL that I'm going to, and the category that it is. We also have as well, and don't anybody be alarmed because it's a um, it's a specific Palo Alto category. Uh, I don't know why they called it homegrown, and that will also be blocked because it's adult. So. The response page as well is, is a little little underwhelming. Um, I'm not a web developer by any um, not a web developer. I'm not a web designer by any stretch of imagination. But we can also create a better and sort of more uh, what's the word I'm looking for more informative uh, response page because the reason we use response pages, the reason for response pages, is basically because we want to we want to inform users. Okay, so the biggest security gap is is the user, it's the, the, the user that's that's at the system because we can create all the policies, we can do all this, we can um, make sure that we control that access as much as we possibly can but if the user still clicks through stuff or still goes to places um, that they shouldn't then that will obviously still cause a problem. Okay so eventually what we want to do is we want to go from here and then we're going to put this on which is a little bit more informative, looks a little bit nicer, say I'm, I'm not a web designer so we have the, the company logo, the web page is blocked, and the website you're trying to visit is blocked by company policy. Okay, if you think it's narrow, please click here. Now, in this particular instance, this takes us to my website, my sort of Mode 44 website, but that could be to anything. So that could be a link to your company's policies uh, within the document store or something like that, or it could be even a link to a, a service now or something to create a ticket. Uh, obviously, as well, within, within this... Um, within this page you could include instructions as to what people do, you can reformat it as you see fit uh, and the reason this is, hasn't got user and URL categories is basically because we've just it's an empty page, it isn't pulling that information because it's not being served from the firewall. Okay so the rule that we're using as well on here is to make sure this page is served and where we're going to control our our uh, URL filtering from is going to be this all here. So blocked URL categories is a little bit of a misnomer. This could just be normal web access or web access for a certain certain group of people. Okay. So the source is going to be the land side. That's my uh, my local area network, and then the destination is going to be internet. It's important to remember as well that it's if you want to create different policies for different departments, or you want to create different policies for different uh, devices, um, although you, you know that's for the hip checks and stuff like this, um, and then source users. This can be layered, so that, so all this will have to match obviously before you get to the end state. So if you if you want to block, say, um, gambling for normal people within the company, people that aren't in HR, for instance, or people that aren't in here advertising, let's say advertising. So they're not allowed to go to gambling, but you happen to work at a gambling company. So the developers and uh, people like this, they, they're going to need to be able to get there. So you would have your source user, which would be your groups. And then you would have um, gambling blocks for everybody, apart from these, uh, these, um, this policy for your developers. So then destination is going to be destination address. Makes, makes perfect sense. Then the application, in this particular instance, because we're looking at um, web browsing, we're going to use SSL and web browsing. Now, this is where the, the, the temptation comes in. So if we can also block the adult and the gambling category from here, because if we put that in there, if we were to put adult in there, for instance, and then change this to block, that would do the same thing or drop or deny, but a response page wouldn't get generated. The reason a response page doesn't get generated is because for your profiles, which are here, to be evaluated and used, you have to have an allow rule because it has to be the traffic flowing through that rule 
it's being allowed and then once it hits the profile then the profile action is taken so this isn't where to do it okay so we go to here and then we've got a profile URL filtering profile which is default again you can when you just drop down this you can create a new category on the fly should you choose to do so and then we have our log forward in and log at session end and um, quas marking and everything for the uh, for the rule if you wanted to targets if you had multiple firewalls in a device group and you only wanted this to be applied to certain firewalls then you'd create uh, the rule with using targets at the end so with this ticked any target all devices is all devices that are in this uh, in this device group in this particular instance we've only got the one firewall in this device group so we have uh, we have all of them is going to be selected if we had multiple in here we could just click on that one and then that would only be only go to that one and then we can have target all but these spe uh, specified devices and tags so we can target all except for those ones uh, group page appears is just how they appear okay so we're going to look at it that way so now we know for a fact that we have to go our traffic has to be allowed across this rule we are going to do it for application defaults which we have here um, sorry here which is application defaults which means that they're gonna to have to go on their default uh, applications at uh, the default service ports so for web browsing it's 80 and SSL 443 okay so that's our rule so let's just have a quick look at our URL filtering which is under objects and then a URL filtering policy there which is the default one and in here we have um, an action of block for adult and an action of block for gambling everything else is alert just as a side note a best practice is to have everything else for alert if what you really want to do is monitor URL filtering then you set everything to alert because if it's set to allow it does not create a log entry there is no log entry for an allow action which means that you are you're missing out on a lot of your reporting and a lot of your understanding of your traffic this is all we need to worry about at the minute. If we wanted to, again, if we wanted to create a custom URL category for this, so we wanted to have a certain amount of categories blocked by this URL filtering policy, and we were to allow certain ones, then we would have that here. Um, another thing quickly to point out, say a quick refresher on, on URL filtering, of course, block isn't the only option. So we have alert, which is um, it's allowed and a log entry is created. We have allow, which is allow and no log entry created. We have block, which is simply block, and then we're gonna get our block page. We have continue. Continue gives the user the option to continue with the action. Um, in, a, in a lot of times, this is so for certain sites or for file uh, transfers and things like this, or, or downloads, you would tend to use a continue action on something that was medium, uh, well, sorry, not medium risk, I suppose, low risk. This way, it kind of, it stops that that just going through, just sort of breezing through actions for a user and it makes them stop and actually just think about it for a minute and you'll be surprised how many times that can make them think, well, actually, do I want to continue? Because purely simply just getting that interaction sometimes is enough to, uh, to, to stop a, a user and, and make them think about what they're doing. And then we have override. Override is within the, within the device, you have uh, device settings Okay, so when we go to device and then we've got setup, and then we're going to look, see, we're going to see URL admin overriding content ID. So in content ID, several ways of doing, well, not several ways, there's two ways of doing this. Um, and then we have the location, which is a vSys one. Again, if you're on a multi vSys firewall, then it would be, you could select the vSys this, um, this applies to, and then it wouldn't be seen by any other vSys. And this is going to give us um, an override option, uh, but with a password. So there is a password that is required, and you've got transparent and you've got redirect to redirect for other purposes, maybe external authentication. Okay, so those are the options for the URL filtering categories, as we've seen. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we actually upload and, and move the response, like get the response page onto the, onto the uh, device. Okay, so this is done. So under device, uh, and response pages and we okay so device uh, response pages uh, this is in panorama so in panorama we won't actually see the uh, the predefined pages we'll just see an empty uh, 
category match block. Okay, on the firewall itself. So on the firewall, if we look in, we can see the default locations and we can see the antivirus, anti-spyware block page. We can export this and we can look at what it looks like and we can edit it if we, if we want to. Uh, the one we're interested in specifically is, is this one. So it will use the predefined page unless another page has been added to it and that's what we're going to do. We're going to import a uh, block page to it so that we can, after we've edited it, we can get to the page that we saw previously. Okay, and then say, and all the other ones here, so anti-phishing continue page, anti-phishing block page. So for anti-phishing actions and things like this, we can also get a, um, a page uh, served. And then we, we can customize the Global Protect app help page, portal login page. Um, the file, file blocking continue page is a really good one. So on a file blocking action, we have, we have that. We have the, uh, the, the ability to, uh, to stop the user and make them think about their actions, basically. Okay, so the standard response page, uh, that's or the predefined response page, which is configured here, predefined, looks like this. Okay, now you can see obviously it's just a standard page it's got some some text there that sort of you know the web pages you're trying to visit uh, has been blocked in accordance with company policy which is sort of semi it is it's informative it gives an idea the user knows that something's happened but the best thing to do is to customize this this web page so this will actually you can hold all, all the HTML that most web pages will hold I mean you know it, everything's rendered in the browser so it's um it's, it's possible to pretty much go it get as creative as you want to get with it really um however you can't host images on here so where this image is here if you wanted to serve another image you would have to create a link to it now an interesting thing is that despite repeated attempts i wanted to to demonstrate that from the response page and for some reason in my lab i just cannot get it to work um, the odd thing is this is the response page here and you can see that it pulls that image um, you can see that's that's pulled sort of automatically but I, I don't for some reason it won't work and please if anybody's got any idea why you just simply get a network error when you're trying to pull it from there in production I've never had this issue but here I do so my lab must be a little bit cranky okay so the way we can edit this then if we come back to to our firewall for a minute if we were to go to there click on that and then export it that would give us the bare bones predefined page that we can then edit so if you put it into your favorite editor you can see you've got all the standard uh, stuff there you've got the the body and you can change the colors by very simply editing the the color there's HTML color pickers on the internet and so on you can change the font sizes but what we're really interested in is at the bottom here where we've got the um, the messages that you're going to give to the, to the user and you can create a, a href tag so you can do a, a link to another website that could be a snow ticket that could be anything like that sort of to um, to provide a way of the user getting the site unblocked or to possibly guide them to whatever the company policy may be so they can view that under here as well we can also we can also customize these and there's there's varying tags um, that you can use but what we're going to use is we're going to use the we're going to use the uh, rule name tag and the reason I'm going to use the rule name tag is because if you are raising a ticket for this, um, if you are, or you're going to service now, you're going to speak to service desk. It may also be useful to have the name of the rule that it was blocked on, because then that then gives everybody the opportunity to have a look at why it was blocked, have a look at the the situation um, quickly, so as they're not trying to work out what you know what it was blocked on, or. So if you're in a user group or something, you can then have that rule name. So that is simply going to be the 
rule name uh, like that and then we we'll close that off okay and then we're going to save that so now we're going to have instead of just having instead of just having the user the URL and the category we're also going to have the rule name as well so then to upload that to to upload that to our to our firewall we're going to import it and we're going to go to uh, also okay and that's going to go into the shared destination if you had multi visas you could put it into other visas the so another thing just to point out here is that all the time you have a predefined um, page within these it will serve the predefined page unless it has another one um, configured, at which point it will serve that one. You can't delete the predefined page. So we are going to save that. And we're going to commit that. And then once it's committed, we'll go back and we'll see how the response page has changed. Okay, so that's now committed. So we're going to go back to our firewall and now we can see that we've got the web page blocked it's in a different color and we can uh, see the rule name is blocked URL categories and then we can click there now this will go straight to my website because I haven't got a service now but you could you could put any URL in there you could put multiple URLs in there so that gives you a better idea of how you do that and you can see if you look on the on the left hand side you can see that it cannot pull that image and I don't know why so if anybody can help out that would be great. So now if we wanted to so if we had a situation where you wanted to let somebody just think about what they're doing um, and then a, a continue action so there's no passwords or anything involved just a continue action we'd come back to here we would go to objects, uh, actually we do it on panorama, so we go to objects because this is managed by panorama I'm going to do it by panorama okay so and we get, we use our gambling as the example so maybe you work in a, um, a, a business that is involved in gambling and although you don't want everybody to be going to gambling what you want to do is you want to be able to give the people that need to the opportunity to be able to continue and, and click through it. Okay, so we're going to create the continue one. Okay, so that's that's now committed and it's pushed to the firewall as well. So if we can just come back to here. Okay, and again we're going to go to gambling.com. Okay, and now instead of the, the block page, we now have a continue page. So we can return to the previous page, return back to where we were. Um, if you click continue to previous page, the action will be logged, which it will be. But as in our organization, we're saying, okay, we, we're going to allow that anyway. We can continue then on to gambling.com. 